what we did as God's chosen people. Do you think that we we uh choice we uh chose the the choice of keeping God's commandments? Do you think we kept the Sabbath day holy? Do we think do you think that uh we stopped committing adultery? No, we didn't do none of that. God says, "Keep my commandments and you will be holy." And we did any and everything except for those things. Right. We sinned against God. Right. Right? So guess what happened? Guess what followed? All of these curses. And guess what? We're under the curses today. We think that all of these bad things happen in the black people. They're just random. God just don't care about us or something. But that was never the case. God put these curses on us because we're in punishment. It, it was to, to punish us for disobeying him and to also wake us up as a people. Right. Because guess what? If we break God's commandments and he, he allows us to be comfortable, right? He allows us to live in the suburbs and things like that. Will we change? Heck no. We ain't going to change. He wants us to be like him. Baruch chapter 4 verse 6. Read. The book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 6. Uh -huh. You were sold to the nations. We were did, we did what? You were sold to the nations. So my, my brother, what's your name one more time? Darren? Yeah. Okay, brother Darren. Who was sold to the to the nations? The slaves who are, what do we call ourselves today? Negroes, right? The so-called blacks and Hispanics. We were sold to the other nations. What do we call that event? The slave trade. The slave trade. That's what this is talking about, read. Not for your destruction. Not for our destruction. Yes, as a punishment but not for our total annihilation. Read on. But because ye moved God to wrath. We did what? Ye moved God to wrath. We moved God to wrath. We made him angry. Right. right. He told us to keep his commandments, and we said, right. still to this day, we said, well, you know, all we want to do is sin and live in pleasure. Right. right. That's all we care about. So God is up in his heavens looking down at us, his chosen people, angry right. every single day, ready to push that butt, right. ready to end it all. But his love and his mercy is holding back them angels. Let's get that in our Revelations real quick. Revelations chapter 7. There's angels that are set up to destroy the whole world that you can't see. That God says, hold on, I'm going to wait for my people to wake up first. Don't destroy it yet. I know I'm mad. I, I know I'm ready to destroy America, which is Babylon the Great in the scriptures. I'm ready to dis destroy that place. The sin city. I can't wait to do it. But my people are still, they still sleep. So wait until enough of them wake up. That's what the scriptures say. We're going to bring it out for you, Rick. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, uh -huh. holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth. So this is talking about the angels, right? Nor on the sea, uh -huh. nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Read verse 3, excuse me. Verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth. Do not, do not what? Hurt not the earth. So the so God is telling the angels to hurt not the earth, meaning don't destroy it yet. Read on. Neither neither the sea uh -huh. nor the trees, because all of those things, when them bombs hit, the nuclear missiles that are appointed from God to hit this place and the whole world, even the oceans, even the seas, all of that is going to be destroyed. Read on. All of it is going to be destroyed. Read on. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So God is saying, wait until Brother Derek, right? Darren, to, to my sister in the back, till they wake up and start keeping my commandments. Wait until I seal them up. They don't know who they are yet. They don't know that they are the chosen people of God. Well, you know, don't destroy that place yet. I know I got my, my spiritual target on it. I know they can't see it because they wake up and they see they see Popeyes right across the street. 
They see beautiful days. It was a beautiful day today. My people don't realize what's really going, uh, going on in the spiritual realm yet. Right. There's a spiritual realm that we can't see. Demons everywhere. All throughout this, this place called America. Right. That we can't see. It's because we're not godly yet. But we got to understand these scriptures. We, if you study this Bible, you're going to understand. That's why he says study to show yourself approved to God. Because he's going to show you some things. Some things that you don't wake up in the morning and see. But when you go over his, his message to you, you're going to start to see those things. Right. Not only who you are, but who the other nations are. And what's going to happen to them very soon. Bring it out. Keep the commandments. Acts 3. Acts 3. We must start to change. We got to change. Right? This ain't just a, uh, what do you call those? One of those uh, inspirational speeches to make you feel good in a moment, bro. No, I want you as my brother, my so-called black brother, I want you to live forever. Right. I don't want for there to uh, be a chance for you to die. I don't want you to be able to die or to get sick right. or to, to wake up every morning and work for these other nations, to work for the so-called white man. I want better for you and God wants better for you. Right. Read. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore. So God requires what of you, my brother? To repent. Read it. Read on. And be converted. God says he wants you to be converted. He needs you, brother Derek, to be converted. Right? It's, it's, it's plenty of pleasure to, to, uh, uh, to live tomorrow. It's, it's, it's plenty of sin out here. That the majority of people they're gonna be living out until Christ comes back. But God, He wants you and the majority of and really all of us to repent. So we won't have to experience what's coming to this place. Right? So in those in that last day, Brother Derek, my sister in the back, right? The whole point of us keeping the commandments is so that our sins get blotted out. Our sins get blotted out. Right now. Us as a, as a people, as a nation, including us, we're full of sin. Right. But you have to purge those things out. You have to stop celebrating Christmas. Stop celebrating Thanksgiving. We have our own high holy days. God says, I have my own special days that I want my chosen people to, to follow, to feast in. I don't want Christmas or Thanksgiving to have anything to do with my chosen people. Right. All of that is paganism. Right. All of that is sin. Right. But not for my chosen people. Not for Brother Derek. Not for his family. That's not what he wants. Read on. Verse 20. He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. All right. So let me ask you a question, Brother Derek. Are you married at all? You're married? All praises. Good. Did you know that marriage is honorable? So God does not respect boyfriend and girlfriend. You did the right thing. You married that sister. Oh, is, is it a black woman? So called? Oh, that's her right there. All praises. I should have figured. Yo, what's your name? Derek. And what's your wife's name? Victoria. And Victoria. That's a beautiful thing in the black community. We need more of this. Don't y'all agree? In the black community. All right. We need more brothers that's willing to marry our beautiful sisters and not make a whore out of them. Because right. that's what we do. Right. That's what we do when we lay down with a sister, we humble her, and then we don't marry her. What did we just do to that sister? We just made her a whore. Right. It's many of our daughters that have become whores because of irresponsibility. Black men that can't step up and be a man. Right. So all praise to the Most High, brother. You keep teaching by your example. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11, all right? I'm married as well. Many of these brothers are married, all right? We take care of our wives and our children too. That's the message that we teach. We teach this throughout the whole earth, all right? Now, if you want a healthy marriage, all right, you got to make sure that you're mindful of God's commandments. Right. Are we going to bring out a, cam a commandment for you? Read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will help you know that the head of every man is Christ. What did the Bible say? That the head of every man is Christ. My sister, did you hear that? Are you married? You married? 
33 years. Oh, oh praise. Now, we hope that it's not a happy wife, happy life. We hope that's not your marriage, right? We hope it ain't that, all right? Because that's not biblical. Yeah. The Bible doesn't say happy wife, happy life. The Bible don't say that. It's not in there, all right? We're going to show you what the Bible says. Read what you got. And the head of the woman is the man. The Bible says that the head of the woman is who? The man. What? My sister Victoria, did you hear that? Yeah. All right, so who is your head? Your husband. Oh, That's praise right. to the most high. That's a righteous thing like that. We need more sisters out here that say, my head is my husband. A lot of these sisters, you know what they say? My head is Jesus Christ. Right. You know what I'm saying? My head is the Lord. My Lord is Savior. Yeah, I'm married, but my head is God. You understand? You know what that really means? Can't no man tell him what to do. Right. All right? But not these righteous sisters standing before me. Right. Not these righteous sisters, because right. these righteous sisters love God. Right. These righteous sisters want a healthy marriage according to the Bible. Right. Right. These righteous sisters want their man to feel like a God on earth. Right? right? right. That's what I'm talking to right here. These righteous sisters right here, right? All right, read on. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is who? And the head of Christ is God. So who is the head of Christ? Who is the head of Christ, my brother? God. That means they're not the same. A lot of these churches are not teaching that. A lot of these churches are teaching that the Messiah is the Most High God. That's not what the Bible says. Right. The Bible says that the head of Christ is his father. Right. Meaning he, they're separate beings. They're not the same. Right. All right. So this is the order that we must have in our community if we want to raise up strong little boys and strong little girls. We want them to grow up and to one day know how to serve a man. I'm talking about our little daughters, know how to love a man, then that woman has to show that she knows how to respect a man, right, right. that she knows how to honor a man. You understand? We're going to learn all of this from the Bible. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, then Matthew 26, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Read what you got. Hebrews chapter 13, and verse 4. What? Marriage is honorable and old. 33 years. Marriage is honorable, my sister. All praises to the most high. Come on. And the bed undefiled. The Bible say the bed is undefiled when you get married. Right. Right. But a lot of our brothers and our sisters say, nah, the bed is undefiled at the prom. That's not what the Bible says. Right. Right. But, but as a parent, you know what we do? We say it's okay for my little boy, 18 years old, to go to the prom. Matter of fact, I'm going to get him a limo. And I'm going to get him a hotel room and buy him a bottle. Ain't that what we do as parents? That's crazy. Well, Ask no. me how I know. Because my parents did it for me. You understand? Well, and I know what happens after the prom. Right. So it, it wasn't well for me. That path isn't the right path. You understand? We got to bring another path to our people. All right? Read it. Was that it? No, no, sir. Read on. But whoremongers and adulterers. What's the Bible say? But whoremongers and adulterers. Adulterers. The Bible says whoremongers and adulterers. Come on. God will judge. God will judge. Whoremongers and adulterers. God will judge. That's right. You understand? We don't want destruction for our brothers and our sisters. We don't want more baby mamas. We don't want more baby daddies. We don't want more plan B's. We don't want more plan C's. We don't want none of that. You understand? We want men who's going to get married and take care of their children and, and teach the community to build and to grow and to love each other. But we're not going to do that if we continue to make whores out of our brothers and our sisters, all right? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord.